Hey traders, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about Binko Ventures, ticker symbol BBIG. Now today was a bit of a disappointing day. If you are feeling worried or stressed about your position, I just made a video about AHT earlier today where I go over winners and losers in high momentum trading stocks and how to get on the winning side. So I strongly encourage you to take a look at that and kind of learn from it. However, in this video, we're gonna keep it nice and short. We're just gonna go over a catalyst timeline and then we're gonna take a look at the chart, just giving a full breakdown, going over key indicators, key levels and more. So we know how to best play the stock moving forward. Without any further ado, leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're almost at 500 and let's get started. Started. Okay, so starting off by going over upcoming catalysts for this stock in the next month. So first one we've already talked about last week, it was that the Gemini Valuation Services were completing a valuation on Zash and Lamotive. Um, that concluded last Friday. Uh, still so far, we have not seen any information released to the public. However, if that does come out, pay attention. This could be a big catalyst for the stock. Um, we've talked about this in recent videos. Um, I am very, very personally bullish on Lamotive and where it would be valued at. I do believe that you know if it is even one one thousandth as valuable as TikTok, well, all of a sudden, BBIG stock should be worth four times where it's currently at because that would put Lamotive specifically at a valuation that is higher than three times BBIG's current market cap. If you want to get more info on that, I strongly encourage you to check back and look at the video I made last week on BBIG and ones I've made before that. However, we also have upcoming uh, catalysts to talk about. Okay, so the parties intend to sign a final agreement and plan a merger and reorganization on or before June 24th, 2021. So that's pretty much within a week or so. We're going to start to see that this merger is finally good to go. We have seen lots and lots of run-up um, prior to this, and I personally am very, very confident that this goes through. But June 24th is the deadline there, so keep that on your radar. That could create a lot of buzz for the stock. And just as uh, just as prevalent is that subject to regulatory and exchange approvals, the parties intend to issue a formal proxy to the Vinco shareholders for the approval of the Zash merger with Vinco on or before July 15th of this year. So that's coming up in a month. Another major step to getting this merger completed and once again, changing the bottom line for BBIG forever. If you are starting to feel a little bit worried or uh, you know a little bit cautious about this merger going through, just given that it's been pushed back two times, let me reassure you with just th this one thing just cracks me up um, when I take a look at it. If you go on the Vinco Ventures website, specifically the investor relations contacts, take a look at their media contact right now. That's Gary Coops, and you can reach him at press at zash.global. Zash.global. So um, they've already updated their contact information on their site uh, that pretty much indicates that the merger with Zash is good to go. Um, that piece alone should be good enough to tell you that, you know, things are definitely trending in the right direction and we should be seeing this merger kind of come to fruition within the next month. That could mean absolutely massive things for the BBIG stock. And while it is down around 11% with about an hour left to go in the market trading session, we do see that we are still sitting very, very pretty on the chart. If you take a look a little bit longer term, we've been sitting in a downtrend for the first three months of the year after having a huge rip in January. And starting about mid-April, things started to change and shift to the upside. And we have been in this longer term uptrend ever since, setting higher highs and higher lows. So as you guys can see here, higher lows just constantly being set today. Hopefully another higher low just kind of being finished off here as we start to curl back to the upside and also higher lows we've been setting or higher highs rather we've been setting along the way. So this stock looks very healthy. This is definitely a long-term uptrend and that should be at least somewhat reassuring to people who tend to focus a little bit shorter term. This is an excellent, excellent swing. Now let's take a look at the one minute and go over key indicators. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the VWAP, the volume weighted average price. Um, with about an hour left to go, it does look like we're going to close below the VWAP. So that is a little bit bearish, but keep in mind, we have been seeing this consolidation happen for the last few days. And so at, at some point, this stock is going to have to start curling and showing some signs of life, and that could be tomorrow. So I would not read too much into the VWAP. 
as other indicators to keep in mind. We are starting to get closer to this 21 day EMA. However, we are still above it and we are sitting above all my major indicators that I use. So we have the 21 day EMA at 384. We also have the 50 day moving average at 279 and the 200 day at 231. By being above all these levels, that means that BBIG currently sits in bullish territory in the short term, in the intermediate term, and in the long term. So things look very good on that side of things. And also another pretty, pretty great indicator right here. We can see that BBIG is starting to come back to neutral territory on the RSI. Um, normally, when a stock gets a big rip and gets into overextended territory, it needs time to cool down if we want to see it continue to progress forward. We saw this happen last time at the end of the May. We saw the stock go from about low $2 all the way to touching $4. And we had this big cool down period where the RSI went back into neutral territory. Stock went back down to around $3, maybe high twos. And then it started ripping again. Okay, It got the consolidation it needed and it started to continue with its upwards progress. So this is a very good sign that we are returning back into neutral levels. It means that the stock is gearing up for another like Ford. So that also is another positive indicator going for BBIG right now. Final thing we have to take a look at is key levels heading into tomorrow. So the first key level of support is going to be at $4. This is a major support. Obviously we battled with it today and uh, got a lot of buyers, okay, after the panic selling kind of ended. We got a lot of buyers right here at that $4 range, a lot of buyers interested in the stock at these prices. Um, that should come as no surprise. So expect this to continue to hold as a major support. If we do break under that, there is downside all the way to 360 and 330. Um, however, like I said, expect a lot of buyers to come in if we do reach those levels, just given the amount of catalyst upcoming for the stock. On top of that, if you are looking to add or uh, open a position in the stock, uh, make sure to target support levels for your buys. By doing so, you're going to minimize your risk and maximize your upside. Now taking a look at upside and resistance levels for tomorrow. So the first one we want to get above is 420. If we can do that, expect a retest of 450. After that, 485 to $5 is going to be a huge range. And then things are going to start to look a lot more bullish after that. We do have a bit of resistance here, 522, 540, 557. But after that, we could start retesting $6 and things are going to start to look very, very exciting. Last thing to take a look at is the volume. It's essentially just going to confirm um, you know, what I've been saying about low volume consolidation, which is very, very healthy for the stock. We have seen volume decrease recently, 17 million today, uh, 19 million yesterday, 28 before that. Um, we would ideally like to see momentum pick back up and volume to get back to these levels, 125 million or even 50 million, like we saw last Wednesday. If that volume does come back, expect the stock and the price action to follow suit. Volume is going to be your best indicator for the price action moving forward. But let me know what you think happens next. I'm always very interested to hear your guys' feedback. If you have any questions for me, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. If you like this video, hit me with a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. And aside from that, have a great rest of your night.